Okay, I'm going to be 100% honest here when it comes to the idea of particular pieces of news in the gaming industry. It's been a rather shitty experience hearing back what is going on in the medium. We have the idea of loot crates and loot boxes and people defending it because now loot crates are crossing into the single player threshold with Assassin's Creed Origins and of course Shadow of War. Shadow of War you have to grind for particular orcs to really unlock the final few missions for the ending and of course I saw people defending this saying that oh well if I bought the game it's justified who cares not realizing what precedent it sets. Then we see people defending the patents for Activision talking about how they are going to cater to people who aren't skilled in multiplayer games with these ideas of pay to win models giving them particular weapons guns and things that will edge them out over the competition which makes the multiplayer pay to win which makes it cheap now we have the grim reaper ea coming to take those fucking souls away because guess what ea has claimed another victim today and that is visceral games Visceral Games was the creator behind the Dead Space trilogy, and of course, I fucking love Dead Space. Dead Space is one of my favorite survival horror titles of all time. They took so many inspirations from Resident Evil 4, but they managed to perfect it in such a great scenario. You're in space, you're killing monsters that could be decapitated, delimbed, and they still come after you. It was a great concept. I love the idea, the atmosphere, it was so creepy and immersive and psychological that I just wanted more games in this series that were better refined than Death Space 3. Death Space 3 was a symptom of a lot of creative influence, a lot of creative control going way over the line. EA wanted so much for that game like co-op, they wanted microtransactions, they wanted the whole shebang and Dead Space 3 suffered. Dead Space 3 did not meet sales expectations for EA games. And of course the studio got reshuffled and they started work on a new Star Wars title. So I'm not gonna read EA's official statement is pretty much bullshit. I think the least I will do is put it on screen for you guys because honestly, at this point, fuck EA. Fuck EA and their bullshit. I just cannot stand talking about EA anymore. They killed so many game developers. They killed so many studios with potential. I just don't want to talk about it. But they worked on a Star Wars title that was going to be reminiscent of Uncharted. It was going to be a third person single player adventure and EA statements basically amount to PR bullshit saying that we need more player variety. We need more of an online experience. I think what they're implying is single player is not going to cut it anymore and they need multiplayer, which is kind of weird because I mean, isn't Star Wars Battlefront 2? doing the whole multiplayer component with a Star Wars game. I don't understand, but they decided to kill off this particular project that Visceral was working on and they decided to consolidate their assets and take it for themselves and have a new head step in and take the reins. Amy Henning was the writer for Uncharted and she was going to also pin this game. So she must be confused as fuck right now, considering the fact that she is probably going to get replaced. <laughs> and this is really going to suck for all the people involved because, I mean, now it brings up the discussion, can single player games survive in this climate? Are those games going to be the main benefactor of the numbers for the publishers in the future? Because it seems like EA sees this stuff if something doesn't meet expectations like Mass Effect Andromeda, then those developers, they get consolidated and then people are really looking for the next big thing. So imagine if Anthem 
doesn't do well and Bioware is next out the door. They're right on the chopping block. Could you imagine that? It seems that if you don't fill EA's quota, then you're going to get gone. You're gone for good. And that is a horrible thing. I mean, let's take a look at all the developers that EA killed over the years. I'm going to get some hashtags going here on Twitter and try to find it. Oh, I found it. So EA has killed Visceral, the creator behind Dead Space 1, 2, 3. They also were EA Redwood Shores. They worked on The Godfather. They worked on particular titles. Let me see here because I'm shuffling through my information. They worked on the James Bond games like Agent Under Fire, Everything or Nothing, From Russia with Love. Great games, by the way. They also worked on Dante's Inferno, a nice little ambitious title that may or may not be reminiscent of God of War in some segments. Wink, wink. But they also worked on Battlefield Hardline, and that game also did not sell to their expectations. So, Visceral probably was on the chopping block long ago, but I think Star Wars really put the final nail in the coffin, which is unfortunate because it really gives you a revelation that Death Space 4 is not coming, and if it does come from EA, is probably not going to be as good as we think it's going to be because even though they own the IP, the original heads are now history. They also killed particular studios like Maxis, the owners of The Sims, Mythic, Black Box, Phenomic, Pandemic, which is definitely a huge loss because Pandemic, they worked on Mercenaries, they also worked on the Saboteur, a lot of fun open world games. Uh, I think they also worked on Destroy All Humans as well, which was a fun little title as well for its own little thing. They also killed Westwood Origin. Westwood was the creators behind Command and & Conquer and Bullfrog. I'm telling you, man, this is crazy. This form of consolidation reminds me of when Activision was doing it. And I think they still do it because... A lot of developers have now shuffled to the Call of Duty teams. So they just pump out the same garbage year after year after year. Imagine just getting your entire studio murdered and you have to work on Madden games to keep an honest living. And that's how it works because that's what consolidation means. Acquiring all assets and working on games that will fuel the company or what the publisher wants which is sad developer interference really gets on my fucking nerves sometimes man it really does i like when people go independent i like when people say i had enough of this bullshit i had enough and i'm not taking it anymore and i'm going to leave before i'm next Next on the chopping block, we have LucasArts. I almost forgot about LucasArts, but they are also on this list. They've made a lot of good Star Wars games, of course. They made Sam and Max. A lot of interesting stuff here that is now history in the past put behind EA. Going back to the single player argument, people saying that, well, single player games cannot sell in this climate that is also once again bullshit because i want to bring up horizon zero dawn i want to bring up legend of zelda breath of the wild i want to bring up neo i want to bring up fucking a lot of other games that sold really well that had single player in them a lot of the older gta games they had single player like vice city and grand theft auto 3 and they sold well. So tell me, what is this argument of single player only games just cannot flourish unless you have some tacked on multiplayer? Guess what people? I played the multiplayer, I was a beta tester for Dead Space 2 multiplayer. And guess what, I didn't like it. I didn't like the fact that the Necromores felt like fucking toilet paper compared to the miners. I didn't like the fact that you could easily just die in the game and it wasn't any balancing and it didn't feel like they had any balancing in that game. It didn't feel important or pertinent to the Dead Space story. It was just a multiplayer where there's aliens versus miners and that's it. 
I think that was the first instance of publisher interference because I think in the video that I saw from Eurogamer, they did not want to make Dead Space 2 co-op. They wanted to focus their resources and assets on the main story, but EA was like, nah fam, nah. And I think they did some of the same elements for the third game, but it suffered a little bit more because it was kind of made apparent with those microtransactions. Honestly, at this rate, I am going to miss Visceral Games. I, whatever they would have made, Star Wars, Dead Space 4, I would have been on board because I like those franchises and I want to see what they would have done next. There's been a lot of Star Wars games that got canceled. It's a lot out there and people probably would have wanted that. There's been a gap of no Dead Space games. I mean, the last Dead Space game was, I think, the DLCs for Dead Space 3. I forgot what it was called. Severed? I, I don't know. It's been a long time, but whatever the last DLC for Dead Space 3 was, that was it for Dead Space. It left the series on a cliffhanger, apparently, because I didn't play Dead Space 3. I was like, you know what? This game is kind of boring, so I'm going to skip out. What's going to happen next is going to be interesting, but I think the same fate is going to happen for a lot of studios that go to Activision or EA. A game doesn't meet their particular interests. They're going to get consolidated. I think the same thing happened for Activision with Prototype. Like, Prototype 2 didn't do that well in sales. You got to say the name, no, my brother. In conclusion, there's nothing I can really say or do to remedy this situation other than the fact that, of course, a lot of business shields are going to say it's just business, but creativity is being sapped away for unoriginality because a lot of these yearly franchises are not dying. They keep coming back year after year. Assassin's Creed, Mad, Call of Duty, every fucking year, the same old garbage. And you know me, as a smart consumer, I do my part with all these yearly franchises I don't care about. I don't buy those games anymore because, you know, if you want to prove a point, if you want to play other and more anticipated video games out there, then vote with your wallet. Go out there and say, I'm not going to buy this particular game because these companies saying that single player is not going to thrive in this climate compared to a lot of multiplayer experiences is bullshit. I don't, I know people who don't care for multiplayer games, especially tacked on multiplayer where you play it for like maybe a day or two and you're done. I fucking understand. I fucking understand the replay value and longevity argument. I understand making a DLC expansion is no different than going out there and buying an updated version of a game back in the PS2 era for 40 bucks. But think of it like this. Once again, playing online, people who don't have good connections, people who don't care much for online, people who want this single player focus, people who want some merit out of their game other than team deathmatch just think about it as a smart consumer sit down gather your research look into what you're supporting if you think something is totally bs then that's okay you're entitled to have that opinion if you don't want to buy a product or if you want to buy it later down the line and you want to buy it used that's totally okay i fully support someone saying fuck this developer you're not getting my money that's the statement I'm making. I'm still going to play your game, but guess what? You're not going to get my money. That retail chain who I'm buying your game used from is going to get my money instead. If a developer makes bad decisions, then I don't know why people just stand there and let corporate fuck them in the ass. There's a lot of people out there. I understand the crazy boycotting gesture, but... Again, I support those who do it in a positive way that isn't too violent or isn't too irrational. There are ways to say no. 
you just can't say yes to something because you're impulsive and you fucking want to play a game and these developers see this practice as being a success because you contributed your bottom dollar to things like single player loot boxes or the downfall of another developer trying to take the reins of Star Wars single player and make it into something that is an unholy mess online with multiplayer focus. Just take a look at what you are supporting and everything should be a-okay. At least have some situational awareness to what's going on in the gaming landscape. Because Electronic Arts certainly has lived up to their reputations of being one of the worst companies in America. This is Renegade Operative signing off. I hope you enjoyed my little rant here talking about the unfortunate closure of Visceral Games. Once again, I will see you guys later, and as always, take care.